Okay. It is 10 a.m. in the Midwest on Sunday. That means it's time for a live stream. Let's find a knife. Today we're working on the ANET E10 3D large 3D printer kit. Look, I have not had any experience with this kit yet, but we can get it together and get it printing. I'm guessing if everything goes good, this will be a pretty short live stream today because it's supposed, supposedly just a couple of pieces and some wiring and that's all she wrote. So let's see what we got here. Let's see, let's do Let's do this so we can see what's in there. All right. So we get two 10 millimeter pieces of, 10 millimeter, 10 meter pieces of PLA. A build tack sheet, kind, build tack like sheet. We get a manual. It's four, Pages long. All right. Let's see what else we got going here. Yeah, that's a pretty good size build surface. Oh, we get a scraper. It's sharpened. It's pretty sharp. That's cool. Let's see what else. We got tools, spare parts. There's a heat block and a nozzle and a barrel in there. That's cool. I haven't seen that out of ANET yet. Some tools, some zip ties, a cable. There's a USB drive. We'll check out what's on there. So this is the Y carriage, but it's pretty much fully assembled. Even got the belt on it. It is not tensioned, but that's okay. Let's get that out. Here's the, what I'm going to be referring to as the wart, but that's pretty typical with this, this style printer. We're gonna check that USB drive out. Uh, here's the gantry. It does have two lead screws, two Z. That's a weird looking hot end. Can you see that in there? It's just like a, yeah, it's like a piece of aluminum as the, as the heat block, but it's kind of oblong shaped. So that's kind of different. Uh... U.S. power cord. We need to set that to 110. 3D printed spool holder. The, the bar is actually 3D printed, so that's interesting. It's always fun to see what parts they choose to 3D print. And then I always imagine what printer they're printing these on. Do they just have like a factory of A8 sitting around, you know, printing these nonstop? And that's it. That's all we got. So, let's see here. It's physically in size. It's not actually as big as I thought it would be. Uh, they, so they're on the inner interwebs. They're saying that this is uh, the CR10 killer because it's about 100 bucks cheaper right now anyway. About 100 bucks cheaper. And it's supposedly the same build size which we'll find out. So we're, the build plate is actually about 270, 220. And that gantry is probably, oh, you might be able to print it 400, maybe. 
So I think the CR10 is 300, 300. So this one isn't quite that big, but who knows? We'll see. We should be able to take a look at a CR10 sometime soon in the future as well. Hopefully, if everything works out. So, let's get this over here. Chassis, vertical frame. It says there's some T nuts, so they're, they're already installed and they are vertical. So that's good. So let's. We could put that build tax sheet on there first. That might make things easier. Like, let's do that. Um, I'm tethered today, so things are hard to reach. Clean this off a little. I really don't like putting on the adhesive backed things. I seem to always mess them up somehow or tear them or whatever. I don't have a very steady hand for things like that. Or patience. That's probably another issue altogether. This one's got a few dents in it already, but that's okay. Uh, actually kind of got a residue on it. Not sure what it is. Some kind of oil, probably. It is heated. I mean, the build tack is a good alternative to... I mean, PEI works. You don't want to, like with the A8 or something like that, you don't want to have to print directly to the aluminum. That's kind of a pain. Because you got to get glue and all that stuff. This, the non-name brand build tech stuff, isn't bad. Um, I've had it on, like, the the costal printer, things like that. I've had little sheets of it. It seems to hold up pretty good. Let's see if we can start at one corner here and get it to go on pretty evenly. It might be just a touch bigger than the build surface. Don't get two shots with this stuff either. Once it is stuck, it is stuck. That's some what are it's 3M adhesive, whatever type of 3M adhesive it is, it's really good. Same with the they use the same stuff on like, like then uh some type of adhesive. But it sticks. That is for sure. Oh, there's one air bubble. You know what I mean? You don't get much of a second chance on this stuff. It looks like an easy build. I shouldn't, shouldn't say that out loud. Things will go to hell. Yeah, we got it over just a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to be printing all the way out there on the edge. But hopefully this thing turns out to be a, a good printer, because, again, it is affordable. Uh, CR10s, you know, I tried to get my hands on a CR10, and nobody had one. They have since restocked, and I should be receiving one sometime soon. So, but yeah, the, the, these are available. So, ANET can turn out some printers. 
let's wipe that off before I forget. And I'm probably going to touch it a million times anyway. Let's not. Now we can build. So the front of this thing, they want the extruder up front. So this should just slide right onto these T-nuts. Should. But it's not going to if this is in the way. And this is going to have to move. See what we got going here. First off, let's cut this zip strip. All right. Well, now we can at least slide it around. Okay, so it slides out of the way enough to get the Z motor plugs in there. It seems too easy. That always gets me worried. Seems too easy. Oh, oh well. It's just a little wonky. Slide these around a little bit. The T nuts aren't exactly straight. We can fix that. Actually, probably I'll just be flopped. Yeah, there we go. T nuts are not my favorite type of attachment for aluminum extrusion. There's not really a whole lot of good ways of putting it together, especially this thin stuff. The Z, the top Z mounts are 3D printed as well. That's interesting. The extruder is on its side. It rides on the, it rides on the Z. Kind of on the top. Because I, I guess they intend the, so the filament is going to be, on top of this, so you set that to the side, so it's going to come in from the side, but the you kind of load it awkwardly. That's strange. But again, we'll see how that works. Okay, what are we supposed to be doing? Align the T nuts, insert the vertical frame correctly. Not attach the chassis from the mount, do not turn the frame around. Mount M620 screws left and right sides. I'm not sure what they're trying to show me here. Do they even do we even have we have spare parts? They're trying to show me something on the bottom of it. What are they getting at? Aha. Uh -huh. So there's a screw hole in the bottom of that extrusion, and there's a screw that goes straight up through. And there's some six millimeter screws floating around somewhere. Yeah, big ones. Six millimeter by 20. So those go, those actually give it some strength stability. That's pretty nice rubber feet on there. They're large. Hopefully that uh, will help shield some of the noise. That's one thing about cheaper printers. Man, they're noisy. That A A8 being all acrylic, man, it's noisy. So before you tighten the T-nuts up, that's not all the way down there. That's still hung up on one of those T-nuts. Let's get our super cheap Allen wrench out here.
The right one. That's not the right one. There we go. Ah, uh, Sunday printer build. They're always fun. This might be a good option if, uh, here I'll show you, see what I'm talking about with the, uh, it's threaded on the ends of those. That's ability. But this one doesn't want to go all the way down on this side. So we'll try again. Something isn't quite right here. Don't have a good feeling about that. Stop picking up the wrong wrench. Let's do this. And we'll do... I just want to try to get them straight as possible. And then we'll tighten them up a little bit. So they don't squirrel around. And... That's a technical term. And then we'll try it. Okay. Try number two. They really don't tell you either which side they want. I'm guessing the extruder goes in front, right? I mean, that makes sense. So they have a number one and a number two. So they're calling this the number one. So if you flip this over like that, number one. So yeah, extruder goes in front. Just making sure. Okay, I think that fit much better. Yes, well, not actually all the way down on the extrusion. Is it on this side? It's because it's hitting the end. So let's do one of these numbers. Much better. Okay. So let's put those bottom screws in before we tighten those T-nuts. With those bottom screws, you probably don't even need those T-nuts. They might not be long enough to actually tighten. It would have to be able to flip around in that channel. It might just be a vertical guide at this point. Well, you wouldn't want to tighten these up too much, though. And that aluminum. For sure. And you will be angry all day if you strip those out. Uh, uh, eh, we're doing okay like this. It's a pretty good size printer. All right, so I like these printers that only have six screws. I'm gonna feel like I didn't do anything today if this goes together smoothly. We'll pull the... So there's this thing, I'm guessing it goes on the fours. Colin is here, hello Colin, how are you this morning?
So they're showing you the back of this thing. Yeah, like that. Fingers don't want to work this morning. But that is the least of our worries. We can do without cooled parts if we have to. 3D printed, man. And the quality isn't great on the 3D print. Can you see that? But it's 3D printed. We'll take it. Slide this over here a little bit. We'll leave in. <laughs> It'll hold filament. I won't complain. It'll hold a little bit of filament. Okay. Uh, they want you to put the heater in and the thermistor in. And then pretty much everything else is wiring. So let's spin it around here. There is no plug on this here. It's just straight wires. So that could annoy you not being able to unplug it easily. So you're always going to have this thing following you around. But that is purposely done. This thing is set to 220. It needs, that's the first thing we always should do. Because that will ruin it. So, I'm guessing they are directing all of their wire from... They plan on having this wart, as a, again, on this side all the time, because the filament is fed. So we're going to go with that notion and install everything, all the wiring and everything from this side. It has set screws in it already. I'll have to back those out. Kind of heater block it. Oh, it's in the top. These are usually always on the bottom. Do they tell you that that's on the top? They do. Hmm. That's intentional. All right. I'm going to go blindly into this one as well. I'm not even going to look inside the extruder. I'll just be sad. But we get an extra one. So I'll pull that one apart just to see what the spare looks like. We'll have some time while this thing prints as we always do. That thermistor will actually be setting really close to that nozzle. But it'll work. There's a burr or something in there. What the, they tell you to put that thermistor in that really small hole. I don't think it'll go in that hole. I don't think. Let's try it. Is my head right in the way? I bet it is. <laughs> Mm. 
You're trying to tell me that it doesn't go in there any further than that? I think it should. Boy, it's tight. That's a good... That actually, the heat block is actually bigger than that here. Going on on the interwebs. Nothing. We're good. How's that even possible? Yeah, that's better. Elapsed time. Um. That's interesting. YouTube says elapsed time 4 minutes and 47 seconds, but the stream has actually been going for 30 minutes. Or 28 minutes, something like that. Just something I noticed. All right, let's take that heater down. With the little one. Thermistor is in there. They do not provide you a grub screw or anything like that to put in, but that is pretty common. They're banking on captain tape and luck. That's how they roll. We get two M3 stores and we just throw this on there. Try not to kill any of the wires here. I don't know that it's actually open. I really want you to route the wire to this big ass box. Up through. Not sure what it looks like though. Alright. So it goes through the top. I'm again I'm trying to keep my head out of there. This should really have some heat shrink around where it pinches it. This might be a nightmare if you have to unjam it. But what isn't? Yeah, that's kind of pinchy. Oh, pinchy. Pinchy. I can see that wearing through and causing an issue. Probably going to have to put some tape or move that heat shrink down or something to protect those wires because those are going to fray. Already? Anything touching? Hot parts. It's actually got some uh, fiber heat material in it, it looks like, inside there. Oh. Whatever. Now we wire. Let's see, what do we got? All these are. This is a somewhat nicer bed plug it's quite a bit heftier than the one they have been using oh that's good again try to keep my head out of there upside down upside down okay there's that But we should be back now. Sorry about that. Okay. 
So I don't know how much you guys missed. Why motor and why in stop just got put on? At least it lit up and told me that it broke. So extruder motor. Oh, I bet you that's for the. Hmm. I don't know. That's a, there's a little wire keeper on top. X. Spin around. X motor. X axis. X axis is uneven. I don't know what's going on with the audio, guys. It just keeps dropping. It works all the time, except for when I need it to, right? Hopefully it's not... Uh, I what it would be. I'll try to keep an eye on it. Hmm. Maybe yeah, I got a bad cable. It's probably exactly what it is. Hopefully we can correct that soon. I really need an RF modulated mic of some kind instead of messing around with cell phone apps. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Turns out now. Okay, that's on. Thank you have audio. Yeah, we're good. left z and z axis so we're going to say that the left of the printer is the one with the end stop on it right <laughs> because that's where the end stop wire is those face inward let's do it like this um i think no matter what you do you're going to end up with a risk of shearing that off at some point. Nobody uh, complained in chat about the audio going away, so probably no one noticed. That's fine. They probably, uh, probably left because there was no audio. <laughs> oh, this one is being a pain. It's right from the single. Yeah, the the bed actually hits the motor plug. That isn't going to work. Not going to work. We'll worry about that in a second, I guess. If I can get this end stop on here. Got something going over here. What we got?
Hmm, interesting. Let's see what's going on. I have no idea what's going on with Let's try again. Now the chat should be on the stream, I hope. So now it is. Okay. Hopefully that's better. And they're on the stream, everything's good. It did something bad. Thanks. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, uh, we need some tweezers or something now. now. Life on the interwebs. Hey, there we go. We've had... I think everybody on YouTube wants to stream on Sunday. Okay. Uh, back over. No, you can't flip it because there's wires in the way. So, let's look at the first problem. Let's uh, have a look at something here. Let's do like table, something like that. Take a look at that. So here's the issue. Here. The first one that I can see. Oh, let's get you kind of in there. And we'll zoom a little. So, the Z motor mounts, or Z motor plugs, that this way, and one facing this way. You can see that. Well, when the bed carriage comes by, it clips the plug. It's not good. And they assembled this part from the factory. 
So that's how they intended it to be. How's this one? Yeah, it hits both sides. Uh, those would actually have to be, if for that to work, those would have to be shaved down, I don't know, quarter inch? For, I mean, I guess that's the only thing we can do. So let's go back to Let's do this. So look at thing. You see these log to go out and just kind of hang over the side because that bed is I mean it's it's going to tear those plugs off. That is ridiculous. That's engineer You're incorrectly, right? But now the book is showing that. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's what we'll, that's the approach we're going to take right now. Uh, they just got two screws on the top, and we're going to give them a ninety degree turn. I think that to go. My audio is not great. But I don't know why. I think it might be the internet that is keeping it. It could be the cable that I've got it hooked up to as well. We're, yeah, we're just going to spin these 90 degrees. I'll try not to move much. That might help my audio. That bed would have to come up, I don't know, probably five millimeters. <laughs> Mobile connection, yeah. Let's see. Uh, See if that helps. Hold on a second. Okay, let's see if that makes the audio any better. So I'm going to start flipping these motors around, see if we can get this done. This one's going to be even worse because the gantry's in the way. This one is super tight. Hey man, not much. Thanks for joining the live stream. We're having some streaming issues this morning. Sounds better, good. Hopefully it stays that way. That's the problem with using OBS. Well, there's a lot of different problems, but between internet, OBS, YouTube, sometimes just restarting helps.
it could be part of it. That's true. Yeah, they, uh, a lot of people make comments on that Castle review. They seem to dig it. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good printer kit for the money. I mean, it's got a few problems, but. Yeah, no, noise cancellation. That, so, so being in a basement in the summertime in the Midwest, we've got an air conditioner running right over there. So it has a gate on it. Uh, the audio has the, a gate. So every time that gate closes, um, I've noticed that it has some cracking and popping to it. Maybe moving this up would help. Man. Work just to spin the back. Okay. All the wires good. We'll try to do some management maybe while it's printing or something. Keep it from crushing it. So that will clear. That's good. Uh they give you uh an adjuster here. Kind of like an adjuster. So we can tighten that belt up. Doesn't have to be like super tight, but tighter than that. That might be a little tight. I'd like to see that get snugged up. That's the wrong size. See what we got here. That don't look right. Ooh, that ain't right. You see that? <laughs> it's actually the belt. When I tighten the belt up, it actually uh, it's like a peanut. It actually separated the pulley. That's okay. Just snug it up. Hopefully audio and everything is still working while we do this. Like I said in the beginning, this is gonna be a, hopefully, gonna be a pretty short live stream. No 
huge issues or anything like that. So this is intended, so the belt's good. I think mechanically we're good. This is intended to set it over here like this. So we're gonna set it like that. And then we'll switch to the table view as we print. The intent for this to run through that and wire management, that's for Lego printer actually works. So they gave you a piece of Bowden tube. Like two millimeter internal, kind of. So they are wanting you to run that from the extruder to that's pretty curly. How's how tight is that gear? It's kind of tight. No, I'm wrong. This will set on that side because. I was thinking that the uh, what I could be short. This one would be fun. So on this side, I was thinking that it was going to go on. It would set more like this to make life easier. How's a bright orange filament for today? I need to drop this spool so it's all shattered. <laughs> I've been trying to get rid of it because it likes to hop over that part where it's broken. They gave me a 3D printed plastic nut. We can get it to go on there. I don't know if YouTube will actually end up. So since we streamed twice, right? So we stopped, stream started, stream. Most of the time it will resume. This time I actually shut the stream off. So we might with this. But I think I can go back later and. Uh, Put them together or something like that or if it's a total waste i'll just delete it but we should do it this is life with streaming it's just it's not perfect oh and i already have a hang up great at least we found it now this is why i want to get rid of this spool because it's killing me and I don't want to re-spool it. Get some power on this thing. See if we can make the smoke come out. Bring that down there too. Uh, totally different. Oh well. Okay. It's gonna blow up. It'll blow up now. Let's even take the plastic off. Hands on. Hopefully those are good beeps. It has a little advertisement. Let's go to the table view. Let's sit over here. Yeah, that's a pretty wonky spool. Printer is ready. So prepare.
The thermistors are counting off, so they're both good. The extruder temp is getting higher, and the bed temp is getting higher. So, so far so good. While we're waiting for that, let's see what's on this USB. I don't think my computer can handle one more thing. English instruction, assembly, they gave me some models. <laughs> One of them says FU. What is an FU? It's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to get into that. They give you the STL files for the printed parts on this printer. That's pretty cool if you wanted to replace them. Software? What software do they give you? They give you Cura, they give you a driver, and they give you a repeater host. So yeah, there's quite a bit of info on there. That'll work. What we really need is an STL file. Are we warm yet? 50. The extruder is heating very slowly. Or the thermistor is very poor. Let's see if it'll home. So the extruder wire So it looks like they have the label on the X axis motor and the extruder label flopped. So it, when it tried to home it just extruded a bunch of plastic because it was trying to move the X carriage. So those are labeled incorrectly, so we will switch those around and give it another try. What wire is it pulling on? Oh, uh, shit. I didn't even think about that. Well. Damn. I thought this was going to be easy today. We'll flip these around. See, this is what happens when things are supposed to be easy. So those labels were definitely wrong. So that's one issue. Next issue, this wire's got to be flipped over. And if it had a connector, it would make life easier, but it doesn't. We can do this quick though. Too bad it's hot now. We're in good shape. Peter block's not actually tight. It's because they don't put a nut on the top of those. And it's really hot. I think that's way hotter than the 200 degrees that it says it is. It took a long time to heat. We 
We could have just quick fixed that, but we might as well fix it for real. Damn, it's hot. A pair of flyers. Okay, so let's move this over here. We need to take a temp. On that uh, the heat block to see what the temperature actually is because that seems way hotter. And it seemed like it took forever to heat up. But, I mean, that could be PID, poor PID tuning or something like that. Oh, yeah, no, our heat was bulky. Another technical term. Because they didn't, they screwed the nozzle all the way down to the heat block and didn't leave a gap. That's what snugs up. I don't know if you can you can't see that. Let's do this. That's what snugs up the barrel is it leaving the gap on the nozzle. There we go. Let's back that out a little. And if we're lucky. There's enough, mm, uh, it's got to come off. There's a really weird looking heat sink. And it's probably lightning hot. Yep, pretty warm. So it was mounted like that. The heater's coming in from down. So let's say we put it back like this. No, I'm probably not articulating myself well in what I'm doing. Questions are welcome. <laughs> there you go. Come on, filament, get out of the way. Okay. That's more acceptable. So anytime it gets hot, it starts moving around. But so there's no nut on the top of that. They do have a set screw in it. But I don't think that is enough to keep it from sliding around. It wasn't tight. So let's see if that works any better. Is there anything we should do before I put that back on? I think this is 
good to put this product on. You haven't done anything unless you've done it three or four times, right? If it worked the first time, everybody would be doing it. I think everything is still working. That's awesome. Let's make sure my routing is still acceptable. I wonder if we can pull that now that I got this off again. I wonder if we can pull this down some. Probably melted my fan. Okay. All right, it's in there again. Tighten the heater back up. You don't want your heater coming out. There's a burn mark over there on my table that says so. I'd really like to have that set inside that rubber housing. What do we have that would act as a pseudo rubber housing? Um. How about some good old spiral wrap? We don't need a lot. That metal shroud that you cram it through makes me nervous. This should at least give it a little bit of protection if you can get it with this bit get it to fit in there with the spiral wrap on it, which maybe not. It might be just big enough for those wires. That looks like it's gonna have to be modified. All right, no spiral wrap then. I have like five rolls of electrical tape. If I could find one of them, I'd put some of that on there. Yeah, we don't want that much on there. Here's the part where I mess around and cut one of the wires. Sometimes you try to improve things and you just make it worse. That's too freaking tight. Too tight. 
Would it have killed them to make that opening just a little bit bigger? Okay. Back to work. Nothing messing around. It's probably in the way again. Okay. Take two. I kind of like the little uh, logo they got going there. That's pretty spiffy. The knob's good. Big chrome knob, I like that. There is a reset button on there in case you have to panic and do something. Uh, they're both increasing again. That is good. The part fan is on. That's why. Uh, that's why it's cooling so slowly is because the part fan is on already. And that is because my guess is because when you preheat for PLA, it defaults to part fan on. That's not good. But if you're like me, you probably won't use this to control your printer much anyway. So that's cool. All right, we have a G code file. Let's see. What does it accept? Oh, it just has a slot. Oh, and it's a springy slot. Cool. All right. So the card's in. We're we still getting hot. Extruder temp just climbs real slow. I got my finger on the fan so it's not cooling off. Yep. Wah, wah. Keep your tweezers handy trying to get that thing out of there. It's heating real slow. I kind of wonder if, if that's inaccurate. It's really hard to tell what temp these are. With that. Oh, well, there's a problem. Thermos fell out. Because there's no grub screw for it. And those should, that should go into thermal runaway before that happens. But it's probably not enabled. Let's try it from this direction. Nope, can't see that. This is probably worthless. I probably will not be able to get that out of there. Part fan just presses in. Yeah, there should be a grub screw or something holding this thermistor in there. Ah, 
That wasn't good. It seemed like it was heating awful slow. Do they give you any sort of screw for that? No, they don't. Probably, you probably want to pull that apart and add a screw onto that heat block to hold that thermistor in. So you don't burn things down. All right. Now let's see how fast it heats. Yeah, see, it, it was already up 140. Who knows how hot that was? Yes, it's climbing much, much faster now, now that it can actually tell what temperature it is. Crazy. Going to want to keep an eye on that. All right, home. Nope. Works much better when the X motor is plugged into the right plug. Now we play the level the bed game. Where are the post-its? Here's a really crummy post-it, but it'll probably get the job done. Post-its are my go-to leveling mechanism. I have like five stacks of them and I can't even find one. Amazing. Okay. How close are we? We gotta turn motors off. Oops, first one. How close are we? Kinda. We'll start there. Start the teeter totter effect here. So you should be able to print some pretty big stuff on this thing, really. There you go. Oh, ran out of screw before it got tight. And I'll bet there's no extra room on that end stop. Yes, there's no adjustment on the end stop. But Another issue, how close can refine anything? Oh, here's what we need. How far off are these from the frame? So this one is seven and a half. So 75. This one is about 74. So that might give us enough room to get it leveled at least.
We'll have to check it with the bed level. Everything is still streaming, it looks like. Let's see about this side. I have a feeling that one's not going to have enough length either. Oh, just barely. All right, let's go back around. It's because what is that hitting? It's binding on something now that we've adjusted the screw length. I'm just digging holes in the build tack. Awesome. Okay. Now we're getting there. This is why we can't have anything nice. All right, how's the center? I'd say it's a little low. All right, man. Thanks for thanks for joining. Home again and try to go around and level one more time. You know it changed. Eleven thirty. Yes, it's much higher now. It'd be nice if that had an end stop adjustment. I don't think it'll go down that low. I don't think. Not without the screws falling out. I know the backside won't.
maybe a little taller. You can pull the barrel out a little bit, get a little more length. You could get a little more aggressive spring, a little longer screw underneath the bed post. You could do that if it would clear. All right. That'll print a benchy. The software that is on this thing is not typical ANET software. It's not that you gotta click all over the place stuff. Um, this one is running some different gear than the, than the other printers, and that is nice to see. Uh, let's see, what's the best way to do this? So you can watch it print. Let's move. Do that. And then, well, this over here. You don't want to see the spool here. There you go. Now you can watch this. There. And it's all. 11.37. I don't think it's got, it actually has filament. Oh, wait. I think it's printing. Probably see it better from the ceiling. It's going. We can get a little light. The table's going to be way overexposed, but at least you can see it a little better on that dark build service. I have to get another light over there. So now we need to think of things that we can print that are super large.
Look at it go. Look at it go. It's actually moving pretty fast for a discount printer. I don't know. Can't tell you how many you know, millimeters a second or anything like that, but it appears to be moving fast. The couplers on the Z are actually just these two. They're actually a little too high. Probably bring them down. I wonder. I don't think that that Z rod is actually touching the motor shaft inside that coupler. Probably pull that down a little bit. I mean, we're talking. I don't know, three millimeters, and then you'd have enough. You'd have more room and the bed would be easier to level. This is definitely going to have to get sorted out. I'm gonna put some zip ties around it or something. Kind of a mess. So now what do we do? Guess I could clean up, but that's no fun. Got spare parts, got tea nuts. Let's look and see what's inside here. Gonna take apart this spare. Heat block. Take a peek inside it. Yep. I always have to compare it with another barrel. Excuse me, Prusa. It's just a little too big. The Teflon tube inside there is not quite the size it should be. And that's been the same way on most of these printers. They had to bring the size down, bring the size down of that Teflon tube. So the filament doesn't jam. But I'm getting pretty used to fixing it by now. If I can give you any pointers on a Chinese printer kit, just buy a bunch of barrels. And probably nozzles. Maybe heat blocks. Moving right along. The part fan is cooling. So the fan works. No failed parts. Uh, what, what do we have? We had some mislabeling. Heater block wasn't very tight. And the plugs on those motors will not fit. the way they say they do. That's okay. We fixed it. It's printing. There's only like six screws to the whole thing. That's good.
We got a scraper. It's a pretty heavy-handed scraper. Pretty good one. Let's see if I can cut myself with it. I don't know where the thing to this went. I guess they figure they'll give you two 10 meters because, you know, it's large, a big, big build surface. You can print a lot. Everything's looking good. They are so generous, yes. I just noticed it sent me a notification that I was live streaming the build of an A3. This isn't an A3, if you got that notification. It's an E10. We will be doing an A3, but not today. It's getting it done. I have to get another light in here, like over in this area, to light up from this angle. It's just too dark. How's it look? That infill is horrible. And that's probably because it's printing way too fast. Speed is at a hundred percent right now, but yeah, the infill is all uh, missing. It's not stacked neatly. That will not make a very solid part. It doesn't look like... We'll have to watch the... Oh. The extruder is skipping. It's, it's uh, grinding the filament. I don't know if it's not gripping tight enough or if the feed rates are just too high. We'll watch it again here.
It might be that Bowden tube that's causing it. It's awful curly. But filament's really curly, so... No, I haven't seen it stutter in a minute here. Usually when you see it grind like that, it starts skipping steps on the filament. It's almost always in the infill because it's moving fast to that infill, trying to feed it through. And it looks like just straightening out that Bowden tube has stopped it, maybe. How's the infill looking? I don't know, the infill still looks like crap, but... We'll see. It's still printing, we're gonna let it print. Wonder what the digital manual looks like. Let's see. Oh, the card's in the printer. I can't look at the manual. That's okay. Print that Benchy. We hit 62 subscribers yesterday. Thanks to everyone that has subscribed. I was saying earlier, the channel's been going really well. We've been going about six, seven weeks now, maybe. Um, got about 3,000 views and 62 subscribers. Hopefully everybody is enjoying the content. We got lots more coming. Now, see, the outside of the Benchy is looking pretty good. I think it's just way too fast. I wonder what the feed rate is. Doesn't say. It's grinding the filament again. Mass Excel is 25, that's not too fast. Hmm. 
could be the extruder temperature is way off. You know, 200 isn't actually 200. And that nozzle is leaking because there's no top nut. Let's bump the filament temperature up just a touch. Two twenty is pretty hot for PLA, but I have a feeling that that's not an actual two twenty. The Benchy is from me, from the internet. I have a Benchy file on pretty much every computer and SD card that I own. So I, uh, that's the first thing I always do is I just throw a Benchy on it. It's a kind of, I mean, it's a good test one, but it's a relatively short print. It takes almost two hours to print a Benchy, but I'm so used to seeing it print that I can, when it's doing certain things, I can tell if it, like, the filament is grinding. So it's just, yeah, it's just something I throw on there. Yeah, filament's still grinding. Let's uh, lower the speed down 10%. It looked like it was moving a little faster than uh, I usually see. Sometimes it's hard to, t to tell if it's filament grind or retraction. Yeah, it's still grinding through the filament. I hate to go too slow. So grinding, um, so the gear that pulls on the filament, so the, the filament runs through a gear and a bearing. So that, that gear teeth is just gripping the filament and pulling it through. So if the gear is pulling the filament through faster than the extruder can extrude it, uh, it will backlash and cause the motor to skip. So it starts grinding a hole in the filament because the filament can't advance any. Uh, and most of the time that's caused by just sheer speed. There's acceleration and feed rate settings on all these printers, how fast you can go to make a certain move. And filament or infill, the, the cross hatch inside, the infill, is usually the fastest movement. So you always see the grinding during the fast movements. And that's we see broken infill. And so the part will be real weak because the infill doesn't line up anymore. So you see that grinding, you start, you start hearing a crunch, it snap back when it's trying to do all that infill because it just can't get enough plastic through the, through the nozzle fast enough. And you could have a clogged nozzle, that barrel being the wrong size can cause the filament to do like a U inside the barrel and, and cause it to not, not get through there smoothly. Uh, that can cause this kind of thing. Uh, but usually most of the time uh, when I see that it's speed they're just trying the the printer settings the firmware settings inside the printer are set too high or the, or the nozzle isn't hot enough to melt that type of plastic you know the, the 
you see that if it's too cold it'll grind as well because it can't get it through there but from what i see on the on the display the acceleration and the settings and things like that don't look out of scope they look uh, acceptable 2000 acceleration isn't shouldn't be out of that ballpark but we'll see it's it'll take many many prints to figure that one out i'm sure and unfortunately the benchy is almost through all of its infill so i probably won't now that i've lowered it down to 80 percent i probably won't see the grinding again I'm sure this will be just like most of the, of the other printers, though. I'll have to pull the barrel apart and put one in there that's a, the actual correct size before I can start actually troubleshooting what the issues are. The top layer is looking really good though. got a little bit of infill left to do on the very end of the bow there. But now we're down to 80%. Yeah, there's a lot there's a different there's a couple of different ways that that most printer companies do it, but the most common is just a um, sharp tooth gear that actually it it latches onto it. You can see the the teeth all the way down the filament after it's been through the extruder. Oh, it's skipping. Grinding. Skipping. Skipped once. Only skipped once. Yeah, Brian, we got to get you a 3D printer, man. I'm sure I got one that uh, you could borrow for long terms. <laughs> It'll drive you just as crazy as I am. Yeah, I think it's just printing too fast. Because uh, now that we're down to 80, it's skipping and grinding a lot less. It's still the occasional, but all of that will be fixed in time.
And I got to print one of those giant vase mode rockets that everybody prints on giant printers. Seems like the thing to do. Yeah, it's skipping. That is such a sad looking spool. <laughs> that thing just broke like glass too. What is that stuff? That's filamentum. Uh, they use a different kind of plastic on their spools. It is fragile. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely interested in, in trebuchets. That would be a riot. Because I, I could just see that turning into, I wonder if it'll throw this. <laughs> I wonder if we can get it to throw a bowling ball. <laughs> uh, that'd be awesome. And then my neighbors would call the police. The printed parts on here look pretty good though. It looks like they printed them on like PEI. They're real flat and smooth. They even printed little cap, cap ends for the, the ends of the extrusion. Pretty nice job. The rail holders look pretty good. I am anxious to see this and the CR10 side by side will definitely uh, uh, we'll definitely have we'll, we'll do some video or some live feed or whatever of of those two going at it. We'll see how it, how it works. CR10 is about a hundred bucks more, but we'll see if see if it's any better. Yep, eight pound speckled ones. Those are the good ones. <laughs> Yeah, what, CR-10 is 300, 300, 400? Um, I don't remember what I said this one was, but I think it's two, it was 270, three, 300 tall. I don't know what ANET says it is. It's about 225. 270, 225, 270. On its best day, it might be able to do 390. Probably more like 380. So yeah, well, that's all the stuff we'll have to check out. CR10, just looking at the machines, you know, like online, CR10 just seems larger. It seems much bigger. But... We shall see. It's all about science.
Not too shabby. If we can get it to print well. This isn't going to be the greatest benchy in the world. People seem really happy with that CR10. There are quite a few. This is a, I don't know when this one came out. Uh, but there hasn't been a, there's been a ton of videos, but I really haven't seen anybody put it through its paces and, you know, uh, set it on fire yet, like I usually do. So we'll, we will be doing that all week. And uh, we'll see if it comes out on top. About how tall is that gray dragon? Is it down here? That thing is pretty good size. Um, I don't know. It's every bit. I don't know. It's probably almost eight inches tall, I would guess. About 190 millimeters. Um, it was print. It was printed on that that printer there, and it's got kind of a it's got a max of 200, I believe, height. 210 maybe, but like this rocket, this this is 200. So this is a pretty common maximum for a standard. Can you even see that? <laughs> That's a pretty common maximum for a standard cheap 3D printer kit, 200 millimeters. That's about as big as you're going to get height wise. So this one will do it three three ninety three even at three eighty three ninety that's that's a pretty good height when they when the models start getting tall and you start and you're printing like this you know back and forth when they start getting tall like that it's a little unpredictable on the taller you know on the higher end of the gantry uh, you start to see kind of some crazy stuff sometimes so we will see this seems to be pretty sturdy though I mean it doesn't have a lot of flex. It's semi-level, got a little, a little wonky, but not much. Nothing, nothing that would hurt the print. That rocket was actually done on the A8, and it came out much, much better than I ever thought it would. I don't have anything else that's really tall. Not down here, anyway. The wheelhouse is kind of looking like crap. You can see that filament moving side to side in that Bowden tube. Um, that means the Bowden tube is too damn big. So we'll have to get uh, some actual two millimeter, four millimeter tube on there. That's, that's that odd size stuff. It's, it's probably the same stuff that's in the barrel that I don't care for. So I can move this uh, the way of the screen. Really can't see that screen anymore anyway. There you go. Watching printers print. That's what we do.
Yeah, it's got some pretty good size retraction issues as well. Retraction is probably caused by me turning that temperature too high. It's making it ooze. This is how first prints usually are. Oh, I haven't seen my little ad come up. In a while. I hate to mess with OBS now. Oh, it's because the file is gone, I would imagine. Yep, I think I deleted my logo thing. That's okay. I can fix it later. It makes some interesting noises, I gotta tell you. <laughs> kind of grindy. I'm gonna need some oil. Turn it back down just to see what it changes. If anything.
It is definitely grinding more. Eh, it probably dipped real low. Look, it hasn't come back up to 205 yet. Let's see what it does. It needs, there's, I don't know how far we want to get into that, but there's PID tuning, and I cannot remember what that stands for, but PID, they set that in the software so that when a temperature changes, it will, instead of just on and off, turning the power on and off to the heater, it'll pulse the power at a certain rate. Uh, so you can tune that, you can tune the PID of how fast it pulses and for how long. Uh, so when you alter the temperature, when it falls, it'll start pulsing maybe too much or not enough. And it takes a big swing down and before it can swing back up or it takes a real big swing up before it can swing back down. So that, that's controlled by this PID tuning. So who knows how this one's been tuned because they're not going to give you the firmware to look at it. But there might be some screens in there where we can auto-tune it and figure it out. Or just turn it off. But the problem with not using PID is that it, as soon as it, run, it turns the heater on, as soon as it hits that temperature, it turns the heater off. But with electric-type heating and the, these type heating elements, it, you know, it's going to shoot way up and then, then eventually kind of level out. I think it was doing better at 220. I don't think there's any possible way that that's actually 220 or 225. That thermistor really needs to be screwed down in there instead of just laying in a, a blind hole like that. Yeah, it behaves much better at higher temp. See what the next layer of infill looks like. I 
It still don't look very good. That's okay. There's always a chance too that that part fan is set way too high. That's causing the filament to cool. Which is a possibility. I've seen that happen before. It looks, it has auto fan speed on. I'll turn it down. See if that allows the extruder to get any hotter. Auto cooling is enabled and that will yeah, see, it's it's running the fan up and down on its own. Doesn't matter what I set it at. In the G code, you you enable auto fan, and it will run the fan, the part cooling fan, up and down based on what type of part it's printing. Like for bridges, you know, gaps, uh, it'll go 100%, and then you know, it adjusts it as it sees fit. I think it's completely done with infill now, though. That Bowden tube is actually probably a little long for this. I'm not sure why they elected to do that setup. Who knows why they do things they do, but why put the extruder there instead of just on top? Uh, and make it direct drive. That seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> but, what do I know? It is, I agree. This could have been just as easily direct drive. I mean, it's, a, it's an aluminum frame. Uh, are they worried about the weight? I don't know why you would be. It's got two Z lead screws, more than enough to handle that extruder motor, which is still riding on the X carriage, by the way, <laughs> to handle it out in the middle of that print. So there was, there's really no good excuse for doing this. But they did, and that's what we're testing. That's why we test it. So you can make informed decisions on your 3D printing purchases. This one, was, uh, speaking of purchases, this one was purchased by me from the Your Best website. Uh, it was not a free printer. Just saying. That is some cold coffee, but it's good. That is not going to be the most awesome benchy in the whole world. But it'll be a benchy. 
I should take a picture of that infill so I have something to compare it with later. I don't think I can get a good picture of it, but... That is some crappy looking infill. There. That's true. Uh, I like the idea of you know, but coming with this as the customer, right? Uh, I don't know, I should word that carefully, but if I pay for it, um, I can be as truthful as I want to be. Um, and honestly, I mean, you compare these printers back to back to back, you know, dozens of them. Um, you you see the same faults over and over and over. Uh, I don't know. It's just good. It's it works out better that way if you pay for it and don't feel like you're obligated to do the to do a review and you don't feel obligated to say that it was decent or was a good value or is reliable, which. That's neither here nor there, I guess. If that was enough dancing around the subjects. The top solid layers actually look pretty good. Um, again, retraction, crappy. They might give you some profiles. I, they have Cura on there. Uh, they might be a printer profile for this thing, for Cura. I don't know. That file was sliced with uh, Click 3R. Yeah, um, so, yeah, you get what you pay for, right? Um, the problem, the problem as I see it, they crank these kits out constantly. Uh, 3D printing has probably never been bigger than it is right now, and it just keeps getting it's a race to the bottom. How cheap can you make one? Uh, what you sacrifice to, to get the to get the price down to that? But a lot of it is what what you run into is just poor engineering choices. Uh, it it didn't make any sense why they did it a certain way, like flipping a Z rod upside down. There, there's no point in that. Why why would that cost any less? Than, uh, than putting it on the bottom. It wouldn't. It wouldn't make any difference price-wise. What they're trying to do is mimic the people that make these kits are trying to mimic another company or another kit. This kit was clearly created. Now, I don't know if to be true. It was clearly created, in my mind, to compete with the CR-10. The CR-10 was kind of the first really inexpensive, large frame style printer that that got popular and this was an answer for that uh and they cut a hundred bucks off of what the cr10 costs and they did that 
by making certain choices, right? And it made it a little smaller and all that stuff. So it with these kits, with the with the cheap kits, like the three hundred dollar kit or a hundred and fifty dollar kit, it is you get what you pay for. It is. Uh, but I don't think the cost, the way these kits are designed. Wouldn't the cost wouldn't matter one way or the other if they would just make it do a little bit better on this and do a little bit better on that? It, the cost wouldn't wouldn't be hurt by that. It's a race to the bottom trying to get the kits out as fast as possible. And then you have the other side of the spectrum, like Prusa. Um, that kit isn't that expensive for what you get, really. I mean, it's seven hundred and fifty something like that, but it's automated everything. You get genuine parts uh, from, you know, like European manufacturers like E3D. Uh, it's 3D printed, so it's kind of, you're, uh, you're sticking with that model, right? The 3D printers printing 3D printers. Uh, it's all metal construction. It auto levels. It, it, the heated bed is, you know, it, the heat distributes well. It's, good, it's a good quality bed. It auto X, Y, and Z skew adjusts. You, you hit a button and it does all this stuff. And if you want to 3D print and not have to fiddle around with everything, then you know you're going to spend seven eight hundred dollars. If you're printing, and, and I've heard people say this before, and I don't want to quote them, but if you're printing. If you're 3D printing with the printed model being a side effect for your, from your hobby, like, oh yeah, once in a while I get a good model, uh, then these are for you. I, d I just think that any 3D printer to me, though, I, I think it's fascinating how they work and watching them work. So, no matter how, I'm a sucker for a cheap 3D printer kit. I mean, really, I am. So, and it gives me an excuse to complain about it. Just thinking about it, I didn't even check like the the bearings or anything like that to see if any of them were froze up. But the one on the X carriage, all three of those look like they're doing okay. I haven't. You don't see the Z move very much, so. Something sounds a little rattly. I'm not sure what that is, but.
You guys watched the Harry Lion video? This is one of my new top five favorite 3D prints. This thing is amazing. I got a little carried away with the with the heat gun. Maybe we can put him here for a second. He could ride on there. Probably flirting with disaster. But uh, I got a little carried away with the heat gun. His hair got just a little bit too melty. But man, that's a cool print. It took like nine hours. Uh, and it's kind of a pain to get the collar off and everything, but really cool. I'd, I'd print another one of those. Maybe I, if I could find like some gold filament or something, I'd, I'd do another one. They, he created a larger one that's, that's massive. I don't know if I have the patience for something like that. Very cool print. This wart thing is going to need a handle. I guess you could try to carry it. You wouldn't want to grab it with a spool. That's a 3D printed part. But I guess you could try to carry it around with that. But that'd be a be kind of a task to get your hand around to carry it. So you can just kind of throw it on top of the printer and go for it. But I'll have to find a place to set this thing. I don't know. Main advantage for this printer over the A8, um, it's a lot bigger. Uh, you can, the volume's a lot better. Structurally, it's already better. Well, yeah. Um, you can, you can get two A8s for this price. If you wanted to print bigger, um, if you wanted something that was a little more, like if you had to move it around a lot, if you wanted a little, something that was a little more structurally sound, I'd go with this. If you don't want to mess with putting that A8 kit together, go with this. It, it was much easier to assemble. Uh, print volume on this one is 270, 220, almost 400. So. Uh, it's quite a bit larger. But yeah, you could get two A8s and, uh, you know, print in tandem. You turn out a lot faster parts if you don't want to print that big. Uh, this would be a nice printer, though, even if it was smaller. If it was a 200, 200, 200 machine uh, and it was just, you know, condensed down, it'd be a nice rugged machine. It is much better built than the A2. Uh, and the A2 is a small machine that's made out of aluminum extrusion. This one is uh, constructed much better, and it's uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. And it's uh, it does. It's got both Z rods, and it, it's just it's a better kit, and not that much more expensive. Yeah, I'd have to look two hundred seven hundred. I'd have to look at the specs of what they actually. Say it is because that's 300 right there you can see it in the 
I don't think you can see it there. Somewhere in there is 300. So it's actually more, I mean, you could, if you take in, into account that the extruder is about, I don't know, 40, 40 millimeters, you could actually go to, you can probably print 370 easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it was interesting uh, the heater falling out and all that stuff I, I had never seen that one happen I've, I've had fires but it's always something new you know plus I mean it's cheap uh, I've been trying to think of scale right a scale of of how to rate a 3D printer. I've been thinking about that a lot lately, especially a cheap kit. And really what I think it boils down to is price, reliability, and ease of use. So you can't beat the A8 on price. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna dispute that. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, it's a little wonky, I mean like, if you move it around at all, it's gonna fall out of level. And, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to use. Now, reliability, um, there's no way. <laughs> so, so I'd give it a five for if oh, one to five scale, uh, five for for price, maybe four for ease of use. It, it doesn't auto level. That's the only thing. I mean, you could get it to auto level. Uh, that would that would add to the ease of use, but you're going to get a one for reliability. Uh, it's just not going to stand up. It's not hit the button, a print, a print comes out, you know. We'll see on this one. It's hard to rate them though, that's why nobody does it. Uh, you don't see anybody go, uh, yeah, this is a seven and a half. You don't see anybody say that because it's so hard to rate, but I'll work on it. We'll see if I can figure out something. Yeah, same thing happened 24 hours of printing. That sucks, man. Uh, I hate to, I hated to see that, and uh, I, I hate to think that that's happening to everyone that buys an A8 kit, because you know you're going to run into somebody that has that thing sitting on a piece of carpet, and it goes up like, you know, a Christmas tree. But, yeah, I hope that's the last printer that does that to me. Yeah, I've actually done that um, on some of the other printers. It, it's like a square tower that it's it's only one layer. Uh, we can definitely do that. I'll uh, I'll work on something like that. We'll have it in the review. We'll measure it out. See how long it actually is. Because those are quick prints. It just it goes right up. It's a good way to tell to set your temperature too. Uh, so for your for tuning in your filament, um, you can. You can adjust it and let it print 10 millimeters or so, and you can see how well it did the corner and then kind of hone it in. So yeah, that's a good print to do anyway. We can do just a really big one. That's a good idea. It says we're 68% done. I think we're going to try to make live stream time standards. We won't do them every Sunday, um, but 10 o'clock on Sunday, Midwest time. Central time. Uh, that's probably this going to be the standard stream from now on. So, if you're not busy on Sundays, some Sundays we'll be here putting stuff together.
nice relaxing 3D print video. Kind of like watching fish swim. I have a fish tank. I thought about just hooking up a webcam and just leaving it live stream 24 hours a day. You can just kind of watch it whenever you want. Probably chew up the bandwidth pretty good, but I'd like to see who actually would watch it. Pretty funny. I was watching one of Tom's videos and he was saying something about being Zen and he'd say, Usa. Now that's a true 3D printing guy right there. <laughs> Tom's the man. Pikes Peak is uh, a nice place. Been there quite a few times. Did you see the? I can't ever remember the robot's name, but it's the it's the one where he's like, you know, time to make the donuts and. The guy keeps knocking the stuff out of his hands. They were doing a presentation the other day, and I gotta look, I gotta look his name up, but uh, he was like going back, he was coming off the stage, like going backstage, and I guess he tripped on one of the lights, and he just ate it right off the side, just bang, right off the side of the stage. I felt kind of bad, yeah, I know he's a robot and everything, but I felt kind of bad for him. <laughs> you gotta look that video up though, it's pretty funny. Well, we got 73% done. Good deal. Looking kind of melty.
this kind of screen though, that is a, uh, what do they call it? Um, they don't call it full color because it's not color. Full graphic, something like that screen. It's not just your regular two lines. I don't have one to show you, I don't think. I don't have a cheapy to show you. But it's not just two lines, like a regular LCD, or four lines, or whatever it is, four by 24, or something like that. Uh, it's full, it's a full graphical display, so you can make your own logos and stuff and have it print display on there. Um, you could, you could do some pretty rude messages and, and icons if you felt like it. Maybe we'll do that. That might be interesting and somewhat entertaining. Scraper's got good sound to it. Pretty darn sharp. I think I'm going to go see if there's any more cold coffee. Okay. I finally had to break down and get a tape measure that had both imperial and metric on it. I was tired of doing the math, trying to figure it out on an imperial tape measure. Nothing's fallen off yet. Trust me, it happens. The outside of the benchy looks pretty darn good. The inside does not. But that can be tuned.
Now, unlike the the FT5 printer, does that have an external MOSFET? Colin would know. I don't recall. I can see a power supply in there. Just a regular old brick power supply. Uh, I'm wondering though if there's a couple of MOSFETs sitting inside there. Might have to crack that open. See what is, see what's in it. In fact, we will have to crack that open and see what's in it. I'm guessing it's a power supply and a red ANET board. That LCD screen and maybe a cheap external MOSFET. It does have a fan on the back. I don't know if it's an automated fan, but I think it's been running the whole time, but it has one. Oh no, it's a pretty nice kit. It'd be cooler if you could do, I mean, again, for the price, right? But if they would do like, um, uh, way and how and put everything like a metal tray on the bottom and use that as the base instead of doing this so you can just pick the whole thing up and take it with you or whatever uh, but still I mean it, it kind of kind of cumbersome to lug that and that around but it's doable it's, it's good enough for, for the for the price point Top and side doors always gonna sag. Like on the power supply, you mean? Or on the gantry of the printer? Doorways. Uh, like this, you mean?
Oh, the Banshee. Um, top of the side doorways. Yes. They are probably always going to sag. Um, let's see what we got here. I don't even know what machine did this one. You're, so that's called, that's the bridging, right? Um, you're always going to see a little sag in there. I have printed parts where that bridge came out perfectly. Uh, this is a bridging, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this at all. This is a bridging test. So you print it like this, face down, and then it, it sets stairways up, and then it tries to drag the plastic as far as it can go uh, and see how much it sags. And then you kind of you you check on the back how far can your printer bridge, and you you'll see them. I don't know if you can see it in there. You'll see them bow. Like the longer it is, the the more it's gonna bow. So that's what that Benchy is doing is trying to simulate how you can bridge. You can get a printer set up so well, uh, like this like this test. This is a pretty good test. You can get it set up with the correct fan speed the correct bridge um, temperature and bridge speed. Like you can set, when, it, when the, the G-code says, hey, you're gonna go do a bridge, it will change the printer speed to the perfect setting to make that happen perfectly, that, that bridge will. So, a, so for a Benchy, that is such a small bridge, you could probably get it if you've got your printer tuned in perfect. You could probably achieve a perfect doorway without that sag. It, I think it is possible. Um, I'd have to look around for a Benchy that was the most perfect Benchy. I have a gray one somewhere that is the most perfect Benchy. It sagged the gray. This is a really nice Benchy. This is a good one too, though. Uh, it, it, but it still sags just a little. A lot of that depends on the plastic. The quest. Yeah, the quest for the perfect benchy. Yeah, those th with the right plastic, and if it cools fast enough, um, it can bridge really darn far. That's a hundred. That's a hundred millimeters. So, and that's printing in the middle of nowhere. I mean, in just in air. Uh, it's it's amazing. How well this is PLA, and it's easy to use, and but it will bridge very well. And that, that's kind of my judge. That how I judge how good filament is. If uh, if you can bridge that far, that is some good filament. I didn't even check. I wonder what the standard nozzle size is on this. I was just anticipating it being a four because almost everything is a four. But that file is uh, created with a four. So I'm sure it's a four though. Well, I mean, on a larger printer though, they might give you a bigger nozzle anticipating that you're going to print large and fast. But I bet it's still a four. I'd have to look it up. That's four, meaning 0.4 millimeters, 400 microns.
I've still got to get that. Oh, pull that A8 or that A2 or whatever. Pull it out and get the firmware off of it, and uh, get some of that. It's called Skynet 3D. Is the I don't know if it's a company, but they, that's what they're calling the Marlin version that will that will run on this board on an A net board. Um, I want to download that and get it on one of these printers and just see what it does. I think that would make them quite a bit better, at least tunable. You can tune them some through the click dial there, but not as granular as I would like to tune it. I think the nozzle stopped dripping, so that's good. Sealed it up. I'm digging this scraper. Tomorrow is Monday again. And since this is a build tack sheet instead of masking tape, this one will be jarred off with the spatula. Welcome back. The Benchy is almost done. It does print. Probably one of the fastest 3D printer setups I've ever done. Maybe the fastest, now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> We're gonna. How do you like the tarantula? I don't have one of those. Uh, I have the what I would like to call the A-net version of the tarantula. Uh, it's kind of the same setup. I don't care for it that much. Um, I have had printers that took forever. Yep, uh, single, and I've, I've looked at that printer and I did notice that it's got the single single motor upside down on it like that A2 does. What's the other one? The Black Widow Tivo? It's uh well they got they got like the Tivo little monster and all that stuff, but little monster is almost a thousand dollars. It's huge. Um Black Widow I think is a four or five hundred dollar deal and it kinda looks like a Wan How 
I think that's the one that's the WAN, kind of like a WAN how duplicator. I'd give it a try if I had one. Maybe, you never know. I got, um, we got quite a few more reviews coming, so I might get my, be able to get my hands on a TiVo at some time. There's just something about your, your 3D printer printing parts for itself. Um, that's very satisfying. I like that. Min the mending yourself, you know, I, I don't know. Self-healing, as they would say in the computer world. Yep. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, yeah, 175. Uh, that's pretty cheap. Might have to give one give one a try. Again, I'm I'm always up for a cheap 3D printer kit. I've been asked uh, why all the ANET kits? Why you know why why are all these ANETs? Uh, and quite frankly, there's no there's no reason for all the ANETs. That's just what I was able to get my hands on. Uh, I am not. I mean, I'm not necessarily that fond of ANET. Uh, it's just they're very common. They're very inexpensive, and people ask a lot of questions about them. Um, I will... I'll take on any brand. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. But just just so happens there's a lot of ANET printers out there right now. So that's what I... That's what I was able to get my hands on. Working on the roof. Yeah. It it is kind of surprising at, at what the 3D printing consumer will accept. Um, but again, it's it, you know, it's most people. This is just a hobby 
you're pr you're printing you're 3D printing for the sake of 3D printing. Uh, yeah, it, it's a great time. Uh, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, just making you know, even if we're just making Vinci's and lions and things like that, not not making parts. Uh, just 3D printing parts for your 3D printer. Uh, I mean, that's that's a good time to me. But a lot of people will say, you know, you can't make anything good on a 3D printer. Um, I think the fun part really is the quest of of what can I 3D print uh, that is worthwhile. Um, that that is that works in everyday life. Um, I always go back to the hose gasket. I'm really proud of the hose gasket. I uh, used flexible material and created a gasket for a hose, and I didn't have to go find one. Um, but I think that's the fun part. What can I 3D print? It, it opens your eyes up to um, a lot of different things. Like, but you, you look at things a little differently when you, when you remember, oh, hey, maybe I could draw something and go 3D print it. It's cool. It's fun stuff. A floating benchy boat. Seaport. Yeah. I think the benchy would float if you if you like created some outriggers or something for it. Uh, at Maker Fair, uh, I think it's like the Bay Area Maker Fair. They do a a moat boat float. So you pre three D print. Uh, you 3D print a boat, whatever shape you want, and then you race it. And I don't, I've got one of those boats, but uh, they're, they're actually pretty neat. Uh, I was laughing pretty good when I saw that. <laughs> yep, th three keepers, three keeper tabs on that gasket. I'll show that gasket to anyone that asks. I got a couple of them. I don't know where it went, but... There you go. 3D printing at its finest. It's even got the keeper tabs. I love it. It's awesome. The mighty gasket. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put that on like a plaque or something. That was a defining moment when I when I created the gasket. I don't know why, but I dig it. There's just ever so slightly a little bit of infill on the roof. It's just thick enough to have a, a layer or two of infill. Just on the front half.
You might have to slice this benchy open at some point to look at the differences in the infill. I don't know the best way of doing that, but I guess I could heat up a plane knife and go right through the center. That would melt all my infill. A PLA is really hard. It tends to shatter and come apart when you start uh, cutting on it. I just noticed the Z couplers. Uh, the set screw is not setting on the flat part of the motor shaft, so it could be dancing around in there. Have to take a look at that. One more pass on the roof, and it's all smokestack. There we go. <laughs> oh, nice. Good luck, Tom. I'm sure he has a lot more people on his stream than I do. Uh, but when I'm done with this stream, I will probably watch his stream. That's just how it goes. But you got I beat him. I, my live stream was first. I beat him. I have a Benchy from an E10 first before Tom. And Tom is a 3D printing legend. So we did it. You should go over to Tom's stream. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. Uh, I like that title. You should go over to Tom's stream and tell him that I uh, uh, that I just finished a stream on this printer. That'd be funny. I doubt he'll acknowledge that, but I don't think I would either. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, I doubt it, <laughs> but uh, I would. Uh, that'd be amazing if he actually would, but uh, I, uh, I doubt it. I don't think Tom is aware of, of my channel at this time. You never do. You never know. I do ask him a lot of questions in his chats. Oh, that's cheating. That's cheating. People tell you about it. It is done. Hmm. Two hours and one minute for a benchy at 80% speed most, most of the time. Let's let it cool just a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Tom's a Tom seems to be a pretty good guy. Hopefully he would take it well, right? No, nah, it's it's good. I learned a lot from Tom over the years. All right, Let's see if I can catch it. Ooh, it's stuck good. There we go. So, not bad. I mean, well, I don't know about not bad, but retraction is definitely an issue. So, let's take a look here. Let's see if I can get it in the frame. So, the bow is pretty darn smooth. It's multicolored, but that's probably where I adjusted the temp. So, you're getting different amounts because of the temperature that we adjusted. So, that's probably not any. But then you go up to the top, and look how bad that retraction is. You can see all those webs and everything hanging off. See if we can get that to focus a little. There we go, that's a little better. So yeah, retraction, big time. We had the same kind of retraction issue, the last A-Net printer on the A8. I need to check that file for retraction and see, but you can see it even down in here. And there is one blob on it. It might have fallen. Oh no, it's down in here. That was caused by uh, the extruder leaking. Uh, the filament was actually leaking out of the top onto the, onto the model. You can even see bad retraction uh, on, on top there, which is kind of unusual. So yeah, definitely, retraction is definitely going to have to be adjusted. Yeah, that, it, it's not as good as uh, the A-Net the A8 Benchy the other day, here, here is, it suffers from the same issues, retraction there, uh, but it is definitely, the A8 first print was definitely better than this one.
but it it is a different type of fil a different brand of filament, but that shouldn't matter that much. There's definitely a few issues in the machine that need to be adjusted, need to be fine tuned, but not a terrible first print. Not at all. So that's it. That is the ANET E10. We will tune it up this week, do a billion prints on it, and then uh, the review will be coming up. So, again, everybody that watches the live stream, thank you for watching. I appreciate the participation, and we will see you again real soon.